In this video, I will demonstrate how some of my level-based games in Unity use a scripted process I call Direct Play in order to test the levels without having to go via a main scene and menus in order to load any playable components and then the level in turn just to make sure that it's running correctly. So let's jump straight in and do a simple demonstration and then I will show you it running with some real game examples I have in development. So here we are in Unity with our default layout and we're actually in the main scene and this is our player character which we're going to be using to play through our levels. And we have a menu that you can see under the canvas and we have the player prefab and the game manager itself. Now if I was to load one of the levels and I have them all in a levels folder here, what I would usually do is I would load that additively onto this scene itself and turn off some of the elements in the main scene then have the character play through the scene and have the gameplay flow act accordingly. Now, what I could do is I could unload this main scene completely and all the levels and all the canvas and all the rest and then load up the player into the new scene. But that means that I have to lose some of the information that I've already loaded. So maybe I want to keep the main scene going, lose some of the components to it and just load the level completely on top of it. Now, the problem with that is if I load into the level, you'll see that there's no camera present in the level itself because that comes with the character from the main scene, which I might be allowing the user to change or do something else with, which if I had the character also in every level, I would have to actually make the changes here or source from data, reload that character, etc., which would take a little bit longer. Now the problem I have with the player being in the main scene and adding this one onto it is that if I was making changes to this scene, like I wanted to put in more enemies, extra waves, or change the layout to the scene, if I then wanted to test it, I would either have to run this up and drop a player prefab onto it, or more annoyingly, go back into the main scene and then load this via the menu after I've made my character changes and everything else. Now that becomes a problem because dropping a player prefab onto here means that I then have to make some changes and then make lots of clicks just to play this, this level. If I want to go back to the main menu, obviously that's going to take a long time to do, as we can see here. If I go back into scenes, I go into main and then I press play, what happens is we get our character, we get the menuist, I press level. I press alpha base, which is the level we want to load, that goes to black. It loads the entire level into our game, as you can see here, with the alpha base is loading. It then, once it's loaded, it will transition out of this canvas, and there we have our character, ready to play in our game. Now, that takes a long time just to test that level. So we can do something better, and it's what I call direct play. So let's create that script. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a folder, call it editor, because it's an editor script that we're going to be creating. And then we'll create the script itself. C sharp script, direct, play. There we are. And we'll load that in Visual Studio. Now, this isn't a mono behavior, and we don't need any of the mono behavior functionality. What this script is, is as it's a Unity Editor script, we'll get in that library, is it's a script that gets loaded every time Unity gets loaded. Because it's very important. This is going to capture whenever Unity actually changes from editor mode to play mode. Because we want to know, yes, we've loaded the level, we've pressed play, and we're ready to go. We want to bring in all of our playable attributes so we can play the level directly, hence direct play. So to do that, and to make sure Unity knows that we want this, this script to be ready every time Unity is loaded, we use the attribute initialize on load. And that comes from that Unity editor library. Now, the first thing to do is to create a static constructor for this, for this class, because that's what Unity will basically call every time it loads up Unity. So we want to get whether Unity has changed its play mode. So we'll go with play mode state changed, and then we'll tab to add a function. And this will use what's there. So we'll call it editor application play mode state changed, because it's nice and easy. So there we go. We've put in a callback 
whenever the play mode changes, we want to come into here. Now I like to change the default one, the default name of the variable there because object never makes sense. One thing we do need to do though, is make sure that whenever we get rid of, whenever we destroy this class, that we actually take away this callback. So we'll do the deconstructor and don't need to do static there. What we'll do is we'll take the function, come back here, and we'll just put a minus there. Take away that callback, we won't be needing it. So, in here, the first thing we'll want to do is see whether we've entered the play mode. And to do that, if we look at this variable that gets passed to us, we can say, okay, what is the state change that we're looking at? And here, we've entered the play mode, great. So now we want to know what scene we're in because we don't want to run this when we're in the main scene. We only want to run it when we're in the level scene. So we'll come in, we'll, we'll get a scene and we'll get this from the editor scene manager. Ooh, editor scene manager, which we actually get from the Unity editor scene management library. And we'll do get active scene. Now that returns a scene, but that scene is actually in a different library, which is the Unity engine scene management. There you go. So we've got both of those scene managements in there. Now, what we want to do is we want to see if it's in the levels folder to start off with. And this is pretty easy because the scene actually gives us a path. And we can see if that path contains the word levels. There we go, nice and simple. So now we know the level, the level we're playing with is in the levels folder. Now, the next thing to do is to get a prefab because we want to put all of our components that we're actually storing to be playable in our levels in a prefab. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But for now, we'll set it up so they actually come from a certain location in the asset database. So we'll go load asset at path and we can just type a path right in here that we can set up next. And what I like to do is I like to put it in a content folder under debug, a subfolder debug. And then I like to call it direct play as that's the name of the script and that's just the name I like to give the prefab as well. And we call it prefab because that's the extension that the prefab gets. Now, the other thing we want is we want to make sure that we pass it its type. So here, type of, and we're just going to do a type of oh, try that again. There we go. Game object. Okay. And we also want to just basically cast that to a game object. Brilliant. So now we've got a prefab that we're going to create in a debug folder and we passed it back. Now what we want to do is we actually want to initialize that prefab in the level. So if the prefab exists, then game object dot instantiate our prefab. There we go. Nice and simple. So we're checking for the play state changed. When the play state changed, we're coming into this functionality here. We're testing we've got something in the levels and then we're loading this prefab. So let's create this prefab now and we'll give it a try. So we'll save that scene off. We'll come back into Unity. It'll do its reload. Under our content, we'll create a folder. We'll call it debug as we did in the path there. And then we'll create a game object here, call it direct play, and then we'll copy the player, oh, and we'll stick the player under here and get rid of that. So we've got the player. Now that is the same prefab as the one we're using in our main scene. So any changes we make to the player will be changed to this prefab that we're now creating. So we create our prefab here and we've got our direct play prefab. So if I delete that now, as I say, any changes I make to the player here will be related to in the, the direct play. 
Now, you could add extra stuff into this prefab if you've got extra playable components or you've got different AI or something like that that you want to put in here. So you can boost this up with anything that you would use in main as a playable to get your level playing. So if we save this off, now if we go into our level scene, in this case alpha base, now if we go to our spawn point, if we actually just focus on that spawn point, there we go. So now if we launch the level, press play, what it's doing is it's going into that script, it's getting that prefab that we want, and when it loads, it loads our player. So it's ready to go. But the camera's not working. And why is that? Well, our player has a third person camera that gets enabled when it moves into a level and nothing happens here. So what we want to do is we want to add a script onto our direct play component, onto our direct play prefab that does some action when it comes into the scene. So what I like to do is I like to create a script in our scripts folder and we'll call this folder debug like the other and we'll call this script direct play starter and you can call these scripts whatever you want but in this case I'm using these. So in this one I just want to get the player and make the change to turn on the camera. So we won't be needing our awake functionality, we won't be needing update, we're just going to do everything on start. So here we serialize the field and I always add a tooltip if you've noticed from my tutorials. This is just the player and we'll type in player and the player there and we'll set it to null to start off with and I'll set this in a moment. So when we're in our level we actually want to start our player at a spawn point and it just so happens we have a player spawn point in our scene and all this does is it has a, sp player, a spawn point component which returns a spawn point for the player to load at. So coming back into Visual Studio we'll go spawn points And this just has a function straight off the class that gets our player spawn point. And you could use anything. Maybe you start all your players at 0, 0, 0. Well, you could just drop your player in and make sure they're at that location. Or maybe you have a different spawn class to load. Or maybe you load tutorials. And you could do all that stuff at this point here. But here, we're just going to set our player to a position and a rotation, and this position and rotation will just be the position and rotation from the spawn points. And as you saw, we don't have a camera turned on, so we want to get the component in the children, and we want to get the camera, and we're just going to enable that camera. There we are. So I'll save that. Now if I come into Unity, here we are. Now if I go into our prefab for our, uh, our debug prefab here, if I load that up and I just add the component, direct play starter, and under direct play starter, I'll give player. There we are. And that's it. That's all I needed to do. So we'll drop back into our scene. Now if I press play, it will notice that I've changed the play mode. It will bring in that prefab. It will instantiate it. And then it will run that first script, which is my direct play script. And there it is. There's my camera. There's my character. And I can now start playing my level directly. And I didn't have to go through the menu. I didn't have to find the level I was interested in. I didn't have to save and unsave my scenes when I'm loading. I just went straight in and played the level directly. Now, one thing to note here is maybe 
I don't want to load in all my player components every time I want to look at this level. Let's say I have some animations running in this very, very cool asset. And by the way, I'll leave all the links to these assets I use, like the predator looking alien and this excellent looking environment. I'll leave the links to the asset store where I got these in the description if you want to get them for yourself and make something really cool. So I want to look at in this level what VFX are going off and some animations say this big uh, satellite dish here is going to be moving around. So if I just wanted to see them in action, then maybe I don't want to load in all my player components and have them all set up and receiving input, etc. when I actually want to just load in and look at this level. So to do that, let's put in a menu item in order to show whether we're going to run the direct play system or not. So we come into Visual Studio and we'll create our menu items in here. So we want to name our menu item. We're going to be naming that in several places. So we'll put a, a string at the top here called K menu because we don't want to write the same string in multiple places because if we decide to change the menu location, then we'd have to change it in all those locations. And I guarantee a lot of people that watch this have accidentally changed the string one place and forgotten to change it other places. So that's why we're going to have a constant at the top here. And we're also going to be saving whether that, whether that preference to have direct play on or off, we're going to save that in our editor preferences. So we don't have to keep doing it every time. So enable direct play will be our editor preference. So down here, we'll create our menu item. And our menu item is going to be our K menu, our menu at the top here. If I shrink this down, you can see this as I type. So we're going to be using our menu here. And let's type in the, the functionality of that menu. So enable direct play menu item. And we're going to be setting a preference because this is going to switch between whatever we've had previously. And we're going to be setting the preference of the key that we've set up top. And we're going to be just basically doing the opposite to what it already is. So we'll go and get the preference. Get ball, editor pref. There you go. So we're getting what the flag is set to. We're negating that doing the opposite and then setting it back in. And that will just set whether it is or is not enabled. Now back in our script here, we want to see if that is not enabled, then obviously we don't want to run the system. So editor prefs dot get the ball and okay, editor pref and we'll default it to true. So there we are. If we come into here and this is not this is set to false, then we don't run the system. Now that's all well and good, but if you see my other menu script, my other tutorial talking about how to have reactive menus, you'll know we want to actually have this ticked in the menu option as to whether it's enabled or not. So to do that, we'll create a validated version of this menu. So K menu, let's take in this and we'll just change the function name to have validate at the end of it validation returns a boolean and we have to say that we're going to be using a validate function there we go and then in this one we'll use menu set checked we use the menu name and we'll get whether it's checked from the editor prefs get ball okay editor pref and again, we'll default to true. And we'll, we're not going to do any validation. We're not going to turn this off. So we're just going to return this back to true. Now, if you're interested in how this validation system works, then I suggest after this video, and I can leave a link here or elsewhere at the end of the video, it to actually enable you to go and watch that video on how to make reactive menus. And I talk more in depth about what this is and how to make menus all around your actual Unity editor. So I suggest you go and watch that. So we've set this up here. Let's jump back into Unity. So we're back in Unity. We've got our My Menu. 
and we've got our direct play enabled. If we turn that off, then it's off, and then we could press play. It will jump into the game view. We go back into scene because we haven't loaded any of our playable things and we can just have a look around here and we can see all the cool effects running off and we could just make sure all of our effects and animations for the level was running without having to have all the playable components loaded. But we can turn this off again and we can change the option for enabling direct play, press play. And this time, because we've got direct play system running, It instantiates the player and we're ready to go and we're ready to start playing our level. So here we are in a cockpit of the turret from the turret game that's currently in development, which if you're interested in, I have lots of videos put together. It's a VR game that you play and hold these joysticks and destroy incoming enemies by firing the giant rail guns on the side of your turret. Now, this uses the direct play system that we were just talking about. If I jump into a planet, and this is one of the levels, and these will have lots of meteorites and routes that the ships come in, etc. I don't keep all the main components here, as with the previous example. When I press play, all that happens is it loads the direct level playing component and starts off the tutorial to the level and jumps you straight into playing that level. The guns come up, the spaceships start coming towards you, and you're playing straight away. Now, this is important because in VR, having to select all the menus, put on the headsets, having everything running is a pain. It's, it's more annoying than the previous example. So here we have the Monkeys With Guns game, and this, if I wanted to test the level with all the players set up, etc., I would have to actually come through, do all the selections, set up another player, then actually load the level. And here I could do a level selection where it basically picked the level I particularly was interested in. But as you can see, this would take a long time to get to the level I was interested. So here, the direct level playing system enables me to load the level up, see it running, and then launch monkeys into the actual level itself and have them play. So all this does is it loads up the direct level play, which you can see here, the clone like the other ones we had, and then gives me options to basically launch these players in the level itself and then have them play out and see how the actual level is played and how it works as a two player game, three player game or four player game. I also have a quick option to actually launch the game with AI. And this again uses the direct level playing system, but launches and spawns AI players into my scene in order for them to play out and see how the level plays. And that is how you create in Unity a direct level playing system. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, let me know by tapping the like button and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel. I really hope you got something out of this video and I'll be sure to drop some more tutorials soon. And as always, thanks for watching.